Hey guys, my name is Michael and today we are going to be reviewing and going over all the features of the Makuta 10 Plus. Gonna start off first with a little walk around here, give you guys a little overview of what the scooter looks like. And I've added a couple features to it, so we'll go over those in a moment. But the base overview of the scooter looks like this, minus the bag, minus the lock. And that's it actually. Starting off at the handlebars, we're gonna go through the Makuta display with the NFC card reader, the dual motor switch, the horn button, speed up, speed down, and also mode and power. So let's give her a fire up, turn it on. So it's actually gonna turn on and it's asking for a card. They actually supply little NFC cards. I have one in the back of my phone case, so we're gonna bump the phone against it and turn it on. So it's this card here. And we're good. Okay, so I have put on about 30-ish miles today, probably, already. And yesterday I put on probably 30 miles somewhere around there 40 miles maybe so in total I have actually about 70 miles on one charge and we are going starts off at 66.7 volts and we're down to 58 volts so it's actually doing really good um, if we go over one of the number one things I like about it it's actually gonna be the suspension it's one of the main things I wanted to get one of these for Dual suspension posts, right, on front and rear. And also, uh, single stem. You guys can see that right away. Normally, if you start getting into higher power scooters, they have dual stem. I was looking for something that's easy to transport. So we got single stem. Going back to the display here, you have your first speed, to you click here. Second speed, and third speed. Now we can click our power button, which is also going to be mode. So you can see the odometer, 163. This trip, since we've powered on, zero. And there's my voltage. If we press and hold the up button, you can see the indicator shows that the lights have turned on. What I really like is actually they are frame mounted. Some people think it's weird. I've seen some reviews where people think it's weird. I actually love it. It's one of the coolest features, as well as the sideboard running lights on both sides. The integrated turn signals into the handlebars, which I've read flash for 12 seconds. You can switch them pretty easily. Now, this thing is IPE 65 rating, or 66 rating. I have taken it through a little bit of water. Today was my first time. Only went up to like right here, just for a second. So the edge of the motor case did get a little bit in the water. I don't see that it's overheated or anything or gotten wet inside. So that's awesome. Uh, another really cool feature of it, the folding handle. That is so cool. You just literally pull this, release that, and then when you do that, there's a hook in the bottom. Just pull that a little bit out of the way. That will actually drop down. You can slide that into here and check this out. Picks up super easy, one hand. Uh, you can move it around and put it in the vehicle really nicely. And also, a really cool thing, easy as well. Folding's the same. Bring it back, line that up between. Bring the clip here, squeeze, you're done. Solid as can be. Uh, the handlebars, I like to leave them straight in the vehicle we transport the scooter around in. Don't need to fold them in, but fold them in as easy as one, two, and three. We are there already. So you can fold your handles down. Whatever you set your handlebar handle to is where they'll fold down and line up. So you can get them to line up directly with the stem if you want. Tight, sturdy as can be. Okay. 
So take in mind that we have a 57.9 volt battery and the cutoff voltage is 49 volts, I want to say. So we're going to push it and I guarantee it's probably going to flash because we're going to be putting it under some load. But I'm going to go through one through three. I'm going to start off all uh, single motor, no dual motor turned on. Then I'm going to turn on dual motor after that and show you one through three again. And I'll do a little uh, pass. You guys will get to see how fast the scooter really gets up and gets moving. So we're going to start off level one. Press that button a couple times. Here we are. Dual motor's off because the button's out. You can see it's in. That's on. Off is out. Okay. I have my wonderful camera assistant give me a little video here. Wait one second. All right, guys. So since we're in level one, most hyper scooters or any scooters that are super fast, the biggest trouble with them is the controllers that drive the motors. This has sine wave, so it's very smooth. You can start off with the scooter one hand, but if you watch it with level one, you can barely put any power into it. I'm under power right now. And we're still moving, easy to balance. Now, when we get going, I'll show you guys the top speed. We'll come rolling by you in a second. This is speed one, simple motor. All right, guys, press number one again, or up, I mean. We're gonna go to level two. Give you a little test hit of acceleration. Second. All right, guys, we're at three now. So this is single motor, still three. Now I left out a detail for you. When I was in speed one, single motor, I was paying attention to the speeds. It's doing 21 to 22 miles an hour. When I'm actually in speed two right now, it was just doing 27, 28 miles an hour. And speed three, we're gonna show you the acceleration. We are currently sitting at 57.6 volts. And uh, here we go. guys so that was speed three right there I was just doing uh, I wasn't even topping it off because we're obviously in the middle of the park but I was doing 37 38 miles an hour that's the most I felt comfortable with I will tell you personally from riding it a uh, single motor seems to put me about 41 42 miles an hour it's gonna be a realistic riding I'm 170 pounds so uh, obviously taking to wait, uh, take that into consideration, it will be a big factor. All right, so we are actually going to go back to speed one here, turn on dual motor, and we're sitting at 57.4 volts. We're still going to give you a little demonstration. You can kind of see it does have enough power to spin the tires here, so let's see. One, dual motor. Click it up again, speed two, dual motor. It's gonna give us a little tire spin. If you watch the pavement, you'll actually see it's leaving burn off. It's pretty cool. Click it again, speed three, dual motors on. As you guys can see, this thing flies. When you put it on dual motor, speed three, you can go as fast as you feel comfortable with. Unless you're crazy. Or you take it out on the streets. When you're out on the streets, 55, you want to go faster. But anywhere at the parks, it has plenty of fun. You look at the pavement. Every time I took off, it striped the pavement all the way down. Here's the last one on speed three. It all the way down here. It was kind of uh, unstable to ride, so you know, the scooters are kind of more than you need sometimes, but easy to tame down and fun to ride. So, all right. Uh, the cool thing is, we have actually started retailing them. You can buy the Makuta 10 Plus with the 25.6 amp hour battery, 
LG or Samsung cells, or you can buy the 20.5 amp hour battery, which is going to be a Chinese cell. Should be a good running scooter as well. I haven't personally got to test those. I wanted to buy the biggest battery capacity, so uh, this is good for me. Should be good for you. Check them out on recircuit.com. Read the hat too. We're located in Toledo, Ohio, and so far I know right now we have the cheapest prices on them in the market, 2300 bucks. Contact us, get a scooter. And before I finalize this video, I forgot to show you guys. These shocks are fully adjustable. That's really cool. And then the other number one thing I was looking for on a scooter is actually that it has uh, disc brakes. But I, not only does it have disc brakes, these are actually hydraulic fluid. And it runs with mineral oil. So up there is the master. Down here is the slave cylinder. And that's what squeezes. It has uh, brake pads like a car. And another really cool thing about this is it actually has electronic ABS. So you can turn that on or off. That'll kind of help pulse your wheels. It also has regenerative braking. So when you're traveling at higher speeds, I notice it doesn't really kick on at lower speeds, but when you're traveling at higher speeds and you hit the brakes, it will actually kind of give you a small jerk, uh, a little bit more than what the brakes are doing. And you can tell that it is using the front and rear tire to regenerate electricity and charge the battery. That's actually really cool. The fenders, I didn't really like the factory fender positioning or uh, the way the fender was on. This is actually backwards, I turned it around. The black's supposed to be out here on the front. But I kind of like this look better where it shoots backwards, like shooting star. And then I have it set perfectly that if I bump into something, it doesn't hit my fender. Same with the rear. The tire sticks out a little more than the fender. However, it's just enough to capture all the dirt. So one of the most important features of the fender are being utilized. And I also noticed in the video I was showing you guys, the kickstand was not up all the way. I had it hanging like right halfway or something. It must have been halfway stuck like there. It goes up all the way. And honestly, for a scooter, bike, whatever you want to say, this is one of the strongest uh, kickstands I've ever seen. It's built very well. You can see it has designs basically cast into it. The whole scooter does. That was the other thing too. I wanted me a nice metal scooter, not some plastic scooter. Pretty much the whole thing's metal. This is the only plastic piece right here. This is all metal. Um, same with here. The only thing that's plastic is right here. Still very sturdy. Everything else is solid metal. Um, can't beat that, honestly. And I know you saw the Makuta sign here, but this rubber deck is awesome. You see mud on it. Super easily cleanable. You can give it a little wash. What I'm about to do when I get home, keep it clean. When you want to change tires or anything, there's quick disconnects. You can actually just unplug your plug there. The back side. It's the same way, access to the cover, you can unplug it right there. Alright guys, thank you for checking out my channel. And if you stay tuned, hit that like and subscribe button. I have actually a Varla that we are going to do a video on next. The Varla Eagle 1. So we will show you guys that, the features of it. And uh, we'll take you through a little ride through the park with us. And do some viewing. Such a beautiful day to be out riding, honestly. Now, 
I'll tell you, the loudest thing about the scooter is literally just the tires. Everything else on the scooter or about the scooter is very quiet. Funny, people will only know to get out of the way because they can hear the of the tires thumping down the road. Sounds like we're driving a mini Jeep. But also, that's one of my favorite features as well about this thing. If you look at the tires here, they have awesome tread. So if you do get caught in off-road situations, I can tell you, these tires will help grab that mud, sand, dirt, and get you through what you need without necessarily slipping around too much.